Patrick Riggins Show. Call in now, 865-243-TALK. That's 243-8255. And now your host, Patrick Riggins. Yes, one of us is going down. <laughs> it is either these increasingly irritating intrusions on our freedom and liberty by this overbearing government, or it is this radio show. And as the song says, you'd be wise to put your money on this radio show. You see, I'm an American, and I'll fight to my last breath to free this country from the tyranny that is being imposed upon it. I mean, after all, did, did George Washington give up? Did Thomas Jefferson give up? Oh, I didn't get a no from Tori on that. Did James Madison give up? Yeah. <laughs> well, neither am I, and neither should you. Joining us in our Never Say Die attitude is the radio station broadcasting far and wide our message of liberty. It is the station flying the battle flag for the Patrick Riggins Show 100.3 WNOX. Pumping out 100,000 watts of atmosphere-rattling power and rocking seismometers in parts of five states and two time zones. We have even established a beachhead on the Internet. All you need to do is bring up your web browser and type in www.wnoxfm.com. There, not only do you get to listen to this show being broadcast no matter where you are in the world, you also get to watch it, courtesy of the in-studio webcam. That address again is WNOXFM.com. Manning the console to my left, to your right, if you're watching <laughs> online, is our show producer, Tori. Hello. So we were talking a little bit about, before the show started, how the gig go Wednesday night. Gig went very well with uh, Reverend Horton Heat. I want to say thank you to everybody at the Square Room for having us out there and everybody who came and see, saw us. And Reverend Horton, he, everything was great. <laughs> that a, was the, one of the best shows I've ever had in my career. And is the room actually square? Yes. It yes, is? it is square. It's a nice stage. It's a great place to go see an act. Had a lot of, I saw some of the pictures on uh, Facebook of that. Some of them are quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? what? The, you had one taken from the stage, and the people in the audience were telling me uh, I was number one yeah exactly I didn't know if they're doing sign language or or telling yeah telling you you're number one I took that right after we got done playing and yeah there's, there's one guy nice gentleman telling me I was number one yeah <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny <laughs> George Corda yeah uh. <laughs> he, he forgets something every week hey George yeah yes he what what did you remember <laughs> the the only problem with my short-term memory the only problem with my short-term memory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was that again? I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. But thank you and goodbye. <laughs> Have a Merry it's Christmas, George. I remember how to make it back to my car. <laughs> yeah, it's the one parked right out. It's the limo parked out front. <laughs> That's a little inside joke. Of course, anybody who listens knows that Joe's has or George has the show right before this one, and he always ends up leaving something behind something. Here at the station. Always turns around about twenty minutes after he leaves and comes back. Even something, <laughs> <laughs> even something that you said, don't forget on I'll the way out the right studio. Before he walked out, yes. don't forget that, George. <laughs> Bye. <See ya. laughs> All right. What are we talking about? Oh, I don't know. Oh, the show. Thank you for, yeah. uh, once again, everybody, for coming out. And Reverend Horton Heat was awesome, awesome, awesome. So thank you. Great. So be sure and watch Tori in the 2013 when they start uh, really hitting it big. The world that, tour, yeah. Yeah, the world tour. Yeah. <laughs> the world tour of South Knoxville. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is your world, I guess. That is my world, <laughs> yeah. and I love it. All right. All right. Thanks again for listening this week. You are part of an ever-increasing number of people who are determined to do something to reclaim our country, reclaim our freedom and liberty that has been slowly but surely taken from us over the years. Not all at once, because it never worked doing it that way, but slowly in the name of war, in the name of security, in the name of helping others. All of these are merely disguises for sapping away the very thing that makes you human. Your freedom to do as you wish as long as you aren't hurting someone else, nor encroaching on their freedom. 
Well, you may ask, hey, Patrick, why would government want to do that? Hey, P- Patrick, why would government want to do that? Yes. It isn't necessarily what government sets out to do, but it always ends up doing it. And our founders were smart enough to know this is what would happen if government is left unchecked. We, as the people in charge, are supposed to be providing that oversight, but we aren't. We are asleep on the job. And our employees, the people in government who work for us, that makes them our employees, they are stealing from us and selling us down the river. Why do you think our founders drew up a constitution? Have you ever really put any thought into that? I know the school system doesn't teach you to think, to ask questions. All it teaches you is to accept and do as you're told. Think about it all during school. How many teachers would encourage you to question what you were reading and what you were learning? I would hazard a guess that it was very, very few of them, maybe only one or two during the whole school career. You were taught to accept and believe what so-called experts told you. Even today on television, they bring in, quote, experts to tell you what to think about an issue or how you should feel or react to something in the news. You see, the media not only wants to tell you what should be important to you, but what you you should think and feel about it as well. But back to my uh, question, why did our founders draw up a constitution? I don't need a constitution with my neighbor. We don't steal from each other. We don't try and restrict each other's speech. We don't try to confiscate each other's guns. We don't peek into each other's windows to see what the other is up to. The reason we have a constitution is people are nice and courteous until they are part of a crowd. Now, the founders knew this, and they knew this same crowd psychology would prevail when people got into government. Because this same anonymous, unrestricted behavior would manifest itself tenfold in a bureaucracy if allowed, that government would by nature become an increasing leviathan that intrudes into the lives of its citizens more and more. You know, I've said this on this show before. The freedom equation is more government equals less freedom for the citizens. And the government side of the equation has grown much too large. All right, we're up on the first break here on the Patrick Riggins Show. Always flies by when we come back. Oh, we'll be talking about, what do we have here? Oh, we'll review a little bit from last week, and we'll talk a little bit about this whole uh, debate going on about guns in America. So, anyway, this is Patrick Riggins. We'll be back after this first segment of Messages. Messages. 